to a episode of Inspector Uncensored. So I am uh, Jimmy Tate with Phoenix Home Inspections. I'm kind of known to be blunt. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in a couple of different series, I'm going to kind of uh, tell you some secrets, tips, things that people don't know about actually home inspections, uh, whether it's the inspector, the uh, paperwork, the inspection process itself. But today what I want to do is I want to talk about a topic that has actually the reason why I wanted to do this video is for the fact that uh, I see a lot of questions like, should I attend the home inspection or should I not? Am I required to do the ins inspection? So should you attend the inspection? Well, let me tell you 100% fill in the blank. Honestly, I can give you uh, a multiple reasons of why you should tell uh, attend the inspection. Let me begin explaining to you why 100% you should attend the inspection. Before I begin, the main important thing is you are not required to attend the inspection. So, you know, take that pressure off of you if you can't take off time from work, if you're out of state. Um, don't worry about it if you can't attend that inspection because we are here for you. We are in your best interest. If you think about it, it doesn't matter to us if you decide to buy the house or if you walk away. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that we provide you the information for you to make that decision. So let me get a little bit into it. So why should you actually attend the inspection? Um, now, if I put myself in your shoes, here's the first thing I'm going to think about it. Uh, and if you think about it this way, you're making one of the largest purchases of your life. Uh, you probably only spent 20, 30 minutes in that house. I mean, you spent hours researching and studying and trying to find the right place, the right it comes down to it. You probably spent 20, 30 minutes tops in this house. So when a home inspector comes up to do the inspection, what a lot of people don't realize is the inspection takes average three to four hours. That is a three to four hour time window that you have to go through the house and then you'll be able to answer a lot of the questions that you might have had in your mind when you after you put your offer in. Like, uh, what's the size of the bedrooms? Or will my vanity or my hutch be able to fit in this foyer or whatever? And you're like, I, I need to measure a lot of stuff. So having that four hour time frame is a great opportunity to, for you to come out, look at the house, take some measurements, you know, and actually take your time going through the house. Because um, maybe the time slot you had wasn't that much time. You feel like you spent a lot of time, but now you've got a lot of questions. And hey, what's this or what's that? Uh, another important reason, and this is why realtors typically will kind of push you, like you need to be there. Um, and again, you're not required to be there. No, you don't have to be there. But especially first time home buyers, you can learn a lot about the house. Like, you know, where your air filter is. You know, you probably didn't know that you're supposed to change it depending on the size of the air filter every 30 days or it could be three to four months. You know, that, those are things that the home inspector will be able to answer those questions for you and maybe point those things out. Like a lot of people don't know you're supposed to actually lubricate the torsion spring that's over the garage door because if it dries up, it pulls up. You know, these are things that we'll sometimes will point out. But again, if you can't make it, don't worry about it because at least my reports, that information's in there for your reference. So make sure you actually read the report. Um, from a home inspector side, why is it nice that you're there? Uh, because it saves us questions. If you don't realize it or don't know this, home inspections is a huge liability for home inspectors. So there can be a huge liability. So it's very important for us to be able to concentrate and to make sure that we do a great job. If statistically speaking, for those clients that actually come and attend the inspections and to see how detailed, how thorough we are, it sometimes saves us phone calls whenever we may get a phone call like, hey, I've got a question about this. I, can't, I think you missed this or whatever. A lot of times we can answer questions on site that actually reduces us from having to take those phone calls because, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, we're out in the field, we're doing inspections, and if we're on the phone answering questions, that slows us down. So it's beneficial for us at times to have you there. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is there. Good reasons for you to be there. Um, okay, I don't want to be negative. There are some bad, to I want to say horror stories about having inspectors that just show up. They're in and out in an hour. I've heard of people of an inspector years ago that just showed up, didn't even get out of their car to the inspection. So if you're not familiar with your inspector, you've not done a lot of research, being there, you can actually see how thorough and, you know, and it kind of builds up confidence in that inspector to realize how much knowledge they have and how detailed they are. So it's kind of good to know that, I guess. Um, so 
Let me switch the sides. And I apologize. Why should you not attend? Uh, I actually want to kind of word that as a, a duel. Why you should be late or not show up at all. Okay, I just hit the uh, nail on the head about there's a lot of liability uh, when it comes to home inspectors when we're inspecting your house. Uh, we have detailed, thorough uh, ways of doing the inspection, and you need to be aware of that. You can be very, by attending the inspection, you can actually be very helpful to the inspector because you might ask a question and, you know, they were so focused that they might have overlooked something. And like, oh, and, you know, and it gets the wheels turning. And a lot of times you can actually maybe catch things that or draw attention to the things that are concerns of yours. Um, but in the same note, you can actually hinder the inspection. And most of the times people hinder the inspection. Um, so let's go back to... You take 10 inspectors that come out and do the inspection, the end result is going to be pretty much the same. How they got from the start of the inspection to the end result, those steps can be very different. Those patterns can be very different, especially if you have 10 inspectors. You're going to find out 10 inspectors do things different, but at the end, they have the same end result. Um, we have patterns uh, that we follow in order so that way we don't skip steps. Uh, for instance, when I pull up the driveway, if I didn't do it before I got there, I will pull up, usually park across the road. I'm looking at the house. I'm getting the square footage. The uh, Is it city water, uh, city sewage? Um, I'm entering all that stuff in across the street, or I'll do that before I get there. But once I get there, I pull up, I park across the street. I don't park my truck in the driveway because I want to take a picture of the house with the driveway for your cover photo plus then I move up to take pictures of the sidewalk the driveway and everything else and here's the thing if you showed up early and you're parked in the driveway and I'm taking pictures and your car's in the way if there's something wrong with that uh, driveway and you come back and you're like hey this thing was wrong why didn't you put it I'm like your car's in the way I can't see it uh, the thing is with home inspections unless we can see it touch it access it we can inspect it um, same thing is, uh, if we're going in from room to room to do inspections and you're constantly walking in front of us while we're taking pictures, that slows the inspector down. And the other thing is, is if you're in the picture, whatever you're blocking, if it comes down to if there was something significantly wrong behind that picture, we're not going to be liable or at fault because you interfered. <laughs> and so whenever, if you're there to attend, make sure you stay back behind the inspector, um, or, ask for direction so that way you're not interfering the other thing is this is something that i do and this does mess me up at sometimes is whenever i come in the house is usually has all the lights turned off that means if there's a room that has all the lights off i know i've not inspected it when i come in home inspectors got to check every light switch well our scope of practice says that we should check a uh Select an average amount of light switches and outlets. We're not required to check all of them unless they're GFCIs. But the easiest way to check light switches, especially if they're three ways, is when everything's turned off so that way when we turn the switch on, something lights up because it's black so, or it's dark so we can see. Um, what kind of hinders us is when the uh, buyer comes in and they turn on all the light switches as they're going through the whole house and it's like, I got to go back through and turn them all back off. So I can inspect it. That adds more time to the home inspection. Um, so you don't want to come in and start doing stuff. The other thing that I've had issues with is I am your home inspector. I'm there to do the inspection. You should not perform the same inspection. Because I have one house I was doing inspections for. Uh, two stories. I got to the bottom and I noticed the water pressure was not... Good. It, it was poor. Uh, fast forward, uh, what had happened was is the clients were going through messing with valves. Um, we're not required as home inspectors to mess with valves because you can break valves. We, we're not required to, to test those unless you're in Texas. But if there, something's turned off, there's a reason why it's turned off. Uh, you know, electric circuits, if they're turned off, it's possible that they're doing electrical work. It's exposed. If you turn them off, you could cause a fire. Don't turn valves on that are turned off. And what happened was, is the uh, client or the buyer broke the water shutoff valve in the off position. I couldn't finish the inspection 
checking the remaining sinks. I cannot check for drainage. Cannot do anything because they broke the water shut off valve and turned it off. So do not do your own inspection. Home inspectors are liable for those homes. Um, going Aiming at realtors, here's the thing. If a house is not vacant, I really suggest that the realtors be present because I can't watch you because I'm responsible for the house. And now that granted this probably doesn't happen often, but I've got to get in the crawl space. I've got to get in the attic. I've got to get on the roof. I've got to inspect things in the garage. I can't watch the buyers while I'm doing the inspection. So, and not to be bad about it, but if the house is occupied, I can't watch the buyers because they may take something because it doesn't belong to them. Um, I can't watch them. I can't, you know, I can't be responsible for the security of the house if I've got clients running through the house um, while I'm in the attic or while I'm in the crawl space. Um, so those are kind of reasons why we don't like having clients there when we do inspections, especially if they're not vacant. Um, but to be honest with you, we won't know many answers about the house until towards the end of the inspection. So to me, it's more wise to actually show up at the end of the inspection than it has to be at the beginning. Because like I said, we have set patterns that we follow. And if you're going to interrupt it, and I've had this happen a lot of times, like I'm say I'm doing the front door, I open it up, I look at the weather stripping, I, you know, I pull it up, I'm like, hey, repair, do you replace weather stripping? Client comes up, asks me a bunch of questions, and I get distracted and I, and I move on. And then when I come to print off the report, guess what? I don't have a picture of the weather stripping that's damaged because I remember documenting it. And you got to remember, uh, we do hundreds of homes uh, a year, uh, if not a, up to a thousand. And a lot of things become routine. That's why we have patterns. And if you interrupt the pattern that we're doing, that could cause us to overlook a photo in our documentation. Or if I've gone in the house, I've already done the picture of the uh, cover photo, the driveway, the garage, the sidewalks, the main water shut off, the type of siding, the front door, usually the exterior light to the front door. And if I came in the kitchen to house i usually start in the kitchen but if i came in the house unlocked it and i started doing the kitchen i have to remember because yeah remember i've done hundreds of home inspections like oh i did not start the exterior like i normally do i need to go back to that and a lot of times you know you look at your report and you can see that overlook that even though when we're going through the report it doesn't show that up on our display on um if you're attending the inspection and you want to be there from the beginning to the end is to make sure you kind of leave the inspector alone um, or give them space, stay back behind them. Also be considerate that when they schedule the inspection, they have like a four hour window that is allowed to do the inspection to show up and to go and then their code expires after the four hours and then they have to be out of that house because the bot or the owners are coming back. And he also got to keep in consideration that the inspector probably has another inspection afterwards and they're actually leaving here maybe they worked through lunch they gotta stop get something to eat get their phone charged or their tablet or whatever and get to the next inspection so be wary of their time and not try to hold them up i've been in like an hour and a half like before uh to my next inspection which is not really cool for the next client but when it comes to home inspections it takes as long as it takes um you know, out of probably my last 600 inspections, I've only had two or three that took two and a half hours. The majority of mine are probably close to four hours on the dot. Another consideration I have is if the home is over the, older than 100 years old, best thing is show up two hours late for the appointment um, if you know that they're going to be there for four hours because I can guarantee you with a 100-year-old home, it that house has lived through so many different things from knob and tube wire, single strand wiring, uh, vermiculite insulation potentially, uh, asbestos, which is what that is, asbestos wrap pipes. There's so much that this house has gone through that it could be a lot of documentation and you need a lot of concentration to make sure we hit all the targets 
Otherwise, if you're interfering with the inspection or distracting the inspector, it's not in your best interest because they might miss something. Um, or like me, if I've gotten distracted, I pretty much have to start back to square one. So uh, I strongly suggest to show up at the end of the home inspection unless you're adamant about being there, give your inspector space. And like I had one client once ask me, he's like, can you not talk to me? And I'm like, okay, um, yeah, I can. I just can't take pictures and type and type about one thing, having a conversation on my phone and having a totally different conversation with you. I can't talk about two things at once. You know, so uh, you'll see me a lot of times. I'll do inspections, take a picture. I'll be talking and then I stop talking to you. I type. Okay, and then I go on. Um, so be very mindful of uh, attending home inspections because you can be a hindrance. But until next time, I'll do another video. Um, like I said, it is very wise for you to show up. Just give your inspector space and let them do their job. And realize if you're hanging out in the living room, I've got to have a picture of that living room. So you might want to watch where that inspector is and say they started in the kitchen and they're done. That may be a good place for you to hang out and not in a room that they've not been into because eventually they're going to have to get there. And if you're there, they'll skip that room, go to another one. So they don't, you know, because they want to be polite. But at the end, they've got to remember that they skipped that room. So, you know, be, be mindful. So until next time, I'll catch you later. Thank you. Bye.